Hi, welcome to the channel. So today what I thought I'd go over, because I get this question a lot of what size generator should I get for my home? And what brand is the best? So I'll give you the a lot of questions that I ask to get the right answer to fit them to the correct generator. So if you're looking for a generator and you're not sure of a lot of the stuff on it, you know, what you should be buying, what you should stay away from and so forth, stay tuned. I'm going to hopefully cover this so that it's more in layman's terms versus people trying to sell you crap. So stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric, if you didn't already know it. And we do the weekday during the week and then on the weekend, we have the weekend. And I also throw together some informational, educational repair videos as well. And this one here is going to be classified as educational because I'm going to try to help you help yourself get what you need. So the standard question is, what size generator do I need? You know, in case the power goes out. And the answer to that is, what are you going to be running in your house when the power is out? Now, there's a lot of factors that go in. You know, do you have a hot water heater that's electric instead of propane? Do you have a electric stove versus propane? Uh, you're going to be running your furnace. How many lights are going to be running in the unit? And everyone takes up a kilowatt, right? Or a watt. So when you go to look at buying a generator, most homes on average, right around between 5 and 75 is where I would put you in that range. Now, if you have electric hot water and you've got electric stove and you have a lot of electric gadgets you want to be running, you may need to bump that up to a 8 to 12,000 watt generator. So you have to understand what you're going to be running in the house. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but when you get a generator hooked up and your power goes out, okay, you don't want everything on at the same time so you're going to shut some breakers off in the main breaker box in your house right because that generator once it comes online and it's, it's powering up if you have everything on it's going to load it down terrible and i've seen them burn out so if you can shut your hot water heater off your electric range off you know, the ones that are the big drawers, your lights and all that stuff, the water pump, not so much. Let it get up and running and then bring the one by one back on. Give it a couple minutes in between each breaker that you're throwing. Know where your breaker box is and have your, it should be already, but in the breaker box, it should be marked what each one is. And then gradually bring them on. Now, the next question is, do you want it as a standalone? It takes care of itself as far as when it needs to come on and go off. Then that's called a standby generator. And there's a lot of good ones out there. And you can get it in propane, gas, diesel, and fuel oil. The biggest thing with having a generator, whether it's a standalone or a standby, is having somebody that understands how to hook it up. Because it's simply more than just, you know, hot wiring it in, right? You need, there's a number of things that have to go along with it. And this is where I'm going to defer to, you need to have a qualified electrician come in and set up the distribution where you throw breakers, 
and you have to pull the block out, turn it, and, and put it in so that you make sure that there's not back feeding the line because it could be very dangerous to line crews that are working on down power lines and it could also fry your generator if they kick the power on in the main feed. A standby generator, Coleman makes a great one. By the way, look, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm a warranty shop for Coleman, so I can speak on behalf of Coleman. Coleman makes a good product. They have the homeowner's version right up through to the stand up, standby that takes care of everything for you. And if you get it set up with a good installer that sells Coleman and also hooks everything up, because you're going to need a concrete pad for the unit to set on and then get it all hooked up. And with a standby, it'll go through once a month. It'll cycle itself up and run it for so long and then bop, drop back down and switch it back over. Now, when you have a power outage, it senses the outage and it does all that by itself. And a lot of times you don't even notice when it's switched. The biggest pluses that I know of with the standbys is if you get propane, that's a clean burning fuel, there's very little maintenance to it, all right? And you can set up a maintenance schedule with that installer. A lot of them do this. They will come to your place like once every year, or every six months, and just do a check, clean the filters, replace the filters if it needs replacing, and so on. Just like the standalone, which most people have, that have wheels or deadlifting, right? You need to service that at least once a year. And the biggest thing that we see when it comes to generators is either water in the fuel and, and gummed up carburetor because it's been sitting, or an oil sensor switch has gone bad on it, it's sensing low oil so it won't allow it to fire. And you can bypass them, you can simply unplug them just to get you by until you can get that unit. The problem with a lot of those sensors, you have to do it, you have to tear the motor apart and it, it goes out from inside the block out to where you thread onto it. So for a lot of the older units, we just tell them, go old school, check the oil every time you use it. Now, the other question I get too is like, a lot of guys and gals love to camp. You know, whether it be with your RV or tents, what have you. A lot of your, what I call, pocket briefcase ones that have handles, you can get them right up to like 70, 80, 80 watts, 8,000 watt generator. A lot of times, you don't need anything that big, you know. If you're going to be running skill saws and... and charging batteries and, and building something from the using the generator 45 55 100 watt generator work good for you here's what i see the most when it comes to problems with generators and that is you guys that are off grid that are doing solar and you go to lowell's home depot tractor supply and you buy a homeowner's version to help keep the batteries charged when it's not sunny out. See, solar panels only work when it gets sun on it, right? So it doesn't work at night, and if you have a really cloudy day the next day, your power banks, your batteries will start getting low. So then most people that are off-grid, they'll start a generator up to start charging, inverting, you know, AC, to battery you know and the problem is most homeowners versions are not meant to be a continuous run or have a lot of hours on it. and we've had guys come in and want us to repair a generator that's less than a year old that has got way too many hours on it I had talked with, I think it was one of the Coleman reps that was very knowledgeable about, you know, their the uses and stuff. And he said on average, they figured that most homeowners wouldn't use that generator 
much more than maybe 100 to 200 hours in its lifetime. And that's over a 10 to 12 year period, right? So you have the generator a long time. Whereas you guys that are off grid, you're doing that in a month, 100 to 200 hours. And they just weren't made for that. And I get all these guys that come crying to me because I will not warranty a just used generator that they just run the piss out of. They aren't made for it. And my advice to you is if you're off grid and you have a standby generator or a, a standalone generator that you're helping power your, your house when the sun isn't shining, you need to go to a commercial grid. And they make a commercial. Yes, you're going to pay a little bit more money. But instead of buying three generators a year, the Coleman low-end homeowners models, you're only going to buy one, and it's going to last you years as long as you do good service records on it and, and keep it top-notch. So you have the standalone and the standby. Those are the two major ones that you have. Now, there's... A lot of different brands out there. I highly recommend the Coleman. Porta Cable is another good one. Uh, talk to your, if you're looking for a standby that takes care of everything. Coleman and Jason, I think, I mentioned this before too, because he used to do it. But a, a lot of those Coleman dealers that do standby will do the service work on it. It's hands off and worry free. So if you're away, you know, you go to Florida for the winter and the, the power goes out, that generator will come out all by itself to keep everything in the house from freezing and, and blowing water lines and everything else. So it comes down to what do you have running in your house? Electric dryer, electric stove, electric hot water heater, those things are going to draw watts, all right? And you want to base that on your uses. A lot of people don't need to run their dryers for a power outage. If you want to be able to, then you're going to have to kick up the watts, all right? People will be using their hot water heaters and their stoves. So you have to take those two major considerations, you know, those two as major considerations. Now, your furnace or their... If it's in the winter, you got your furnace. But if it's in the dead of summer, you probably have your air conditioner that takes up about the same amount of juice. My air conditioner in my house is 220. So you need to take all that stuff into consideration. I have at my house, I run an 8,500-watt Coleman. And it's electric start. And what I tell all my customers, I do it myself because it doesn't get used that often is one, when you get done using it, shut the fuel off and let it run completely out. To get all the fuel right out of the carburetor. Let it run itself till it quits. I've never endorsed stabilizer because I never believed in it because I've never seen one that really stood up to the test of time. Now this PRI, I think I pronounced it right. Jason will correct me if I didn't. For gas, you know, one's for gas and one's for diesel or fuel oil. I haven't seen anything negative so far. And we're trying it on all the units coming in. And we've even tried it on my side-by-side. -side. We had issues with a gal come in with a 8N tractor that was, wasn't was running right. And we assumed it was fuel, so we drained the fuel out, right? Put all brand new fuel in it. But it ended up being a timing issue and a carburetor issue. But it was also fuel because I dumped those 10 gallons into my side-by-side -side thinking, you know, well, much I just use it up because I put 10 gallons of mine into hers. And I started having problems of where hard starting and spitting and sputtering, backfiring. And we put in just a little bit and it seems to have cleared itself out, you know. So that I can, I'll even leave a picture of it right here so you guys know what I'm talking about. So on that note, hopefully you've learned something. You know, everything is in wattage. 
and depending on how much stuff you have in your house we dictate what you need for the size you have your stand alone and your stand buys your stand alones mean you have to maintain it and when the power goes out you physically have to go out and start it up and do all your switching and when the power comes back on you have to go back out shut everything off and then switch it back to grid versus your generator standby takes care of it all campers and guys working on building camps and this and that if you go with a three to forty five hundred watt generator you should be all right if you're using a lot of skill tools charging batteries and that stuff on a work site bump it up to 55 to 65 and if you're off grid and you're using it to help keep your battery banks charged do not buy the homeowner series it's not going to last you and nobody's going to warranty it when you bring it in and she's just been whipped step up to the plate and buy the commercial and you're not going to find the commercial at lowell's home depot and tractor supply you are going to have to go to a coleman dealer that deals in just strictly coleman we happen to be that dealer we can sell you a commercial grade that will be cheaper than the three that you bought of the homeowners that you will won't last you a year so on that note you guys have a great day and if you have any questions on generators put it in the comments we have a lot of highly skilled and educated people when it comes to this on this channel that if i miss something or you have a question i can't answer i know they can all right thanks so much for watching and have a great day